uh, we can start uh, welcome to the second day of the c undergraduate research uh, dissertation symposium my name is anuj daga i am an assistant professor at the school of environment and architecture um, and uh, uh, i'm very happy to uh, welcome once again vishwanath kashikar and prasad khanulkar with us today i will not get into a elaborate kind of uh, uh, reading of their bios uh, uh, and jump straight into our panel discussion today uh, we have four sessions today uh, two before the lunch break and two after the lunch break and uh, each will be moderated by one of our uh, faculties the first one that i am moderating is uh, is titled imaginaries of home and uh, uh, in in talking about uh, psychogrammas of space i think this whole idea of the imaginary is quite interesting because it it kind of allows you to talk about the social uh, social uh, contracts through which we kind of uh, exist together we decide to exist together and in that sense it allows us to dip into you know the the various meanings through which we construct and make sense of our everyday lives uh, under this idea of the home and 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 in this is in this kind of ter territory the home is always like one big space which is which al almost kind of looms like a horizon uh, which uh, it seems uh, which seems accessible but is never kind of achieved in its real sense and so uh, so imaginaries of the home uh, uh, is kind of opening up that whole territory that where do we locate the home where do we locate the meaning of home and how do we uh, in, in essence manifest our homes um, in real life so we have four presentations in this section uh, this morning um, the first is uh, by vaibhav mistri who will be looking at vastu shastra and contemporary life um, he will be looking at the way in which people kind of uh, Uh, marry myths and uh, uh, and their everyday uh, anxieties into the whole act of making their homes uh, the second uh, presentation will be by viraj adhate uh, and he will be looking at imagine imaging home uh, where he is looking at uh, the various advertisements that shape uh, the aspirations um, that we dwell into the home uh, that we want to dwell through uh, in our uh we will have raghav gupta who will talk about migrant home making again one of the key things that where where does one physically locate home if one is oneself uh is constantly moving and uh, um nandita finally grounds it uh with her thesis uh titled making a home on the street so uh, so with that i will uh, invite uh, our first uh, speaker vaibhav mistri uh, who will um who will start with his uh work vastu shastra all of you have 10 minutes to present one after the other and then we'll have a common discussion so over to you vaibhav hi can you see my screen yes we can so hi i am vaibhav mistri and we'll talk about the vastu shastra and contemporary life So the use of vastu shastra and vastu consultant in a modern home is controversial. From my personal experience, while buying a new house, my family were mostly concerned about the vastu shastra of the apartment. They hired the consultant, and every suggestion given by him were followed by my family without asking for its logic. All of his suggestions were backed by the WhatsApp forwards and mythical stories related to energies and vastu shastra. So the practices associated with vastu shastra is keep on changing due to the forwards and the stories told by the consultant. which further led me to the aim to understand the logic and implication of vastu shastra on architecture the objective is to understand the space intervened by the vastu consultant and the factor of cost affecting the research question i was looking at how does the practice of vastu shastra shape spatiality and life uh, the operative concept i was looking at was vastu shastra as a structure of knowledge and mechanism of faith fear and practice so the vastu consultant applying their interpretations through the fragmented knowledge on vastu shastra which is guided by their professional practice the knowledge of vastu shastra is practiced by keeping certain context in mind for example the entrance of a house should be always from the north the kitchen should be placed in the southeast etc 
the structure of knowledge came through practices associated with vastu shastra which is ingrained in the society which plays an important role in looking at their idea of aspirations in mechanism of faith fear and practice the research was done in two phase in phase one interviewing the interior designer and vastu consultant to know their reference or method for undertaking vastu shastra as their practice and in phase two interviewing the flat owners who have renovated their flat through vastu consultants the drawing method was graphical series with whatsapp form of conversations so for the field work i have studied 10 houses which are renovated by vastu consultant and i am going to tell the stories of this 10 houses entrance from north nikhil is a 25 year old man who lives in an apartment complex every day he gets up and begins reading the newspaper while doing so one day a pamphlet falls out of the newspaper and he notices in bold letters is this house plan vastu compliant the advertisement mentioned to make the house vastu perfect and to change the layout by visiting a company website initially not paying attention he was confused and anxious but also suspicious out of curiosity he decides to visit their website and speaks with the consultant speaking with the consultant he realizes that based on the location or layout of the house the entrance should face north and not having so it would create a lot of negative energy within the house concerned by this fact nikhil asks the vastu consultant first to find solution for improving the vastu of his house the consultant respond the certain solutions that required the removal of walls and the moving the entrance to the north however because the house is in an apartment building and changing the physical boundaries is not possible he proposes a new solution of adding another partition wall near the entrance which will change flow of entry to the house so now there is a new wall this long place it at the entrance so, so when nikhil opens the door he has to enter straight through the wall and to turn facing north to enter the house shift in the kitchen uh, shukla family group is very active on whatsapp they send each other the morning post and forwards one morning manilal shukla saw a message on whatsapp group which featured the photo of a grid map explaining the flow of energy in a person's home and how it affects person's life manilal began to examine the message and soon started reading and googling about it later talking to his family about vastu of the house they started sending him various forwards and various messages all of which said different things which started to confuse him as all of the forwards and images were saying different things so he thought to consult the professional vastu consultant to check the vastu of his house after the consultant examining his house told the kitchen location is unlucky as a result the consultant advised him to move the kitchen platform to the opposite side of the room so while cooking the cook's face will be in the east as a result there will be a good flow of positive energy in your house according to his advice changes were made to the layout which resulted in additional changes to the entrance of the bathroom as well as the relocation of household objects such as the washing machine and fridge gambler's house Sankit Bagwe used to stay in Borivli with his family of four and was searching for a new home in uh, in the past years. He recently purchased a new house in Kandivli and they were planning to move in the next one. Sankit used to be in the gambling business until a few years ago. It had a huge impact on his life and well-being. He wanted to put those dreams behind him. In order to start fresh, he started seeking the advice of various vastu consultants which recommended him to renovate his house. by keeping the puja room in the most auspicious place which was in the between the hallway in in some ways the puja room made him believe that it was a secure location where he could keep all of his money and his family safe however the placement of the puja room resulted in space congestion blocking the movements in the house which made the space becoming inhabitable and difficult to move around wall of 50 lakhs rustam ji recently purchased a 100 years old bungalow in borivli the bungalow appeared to be dilapidated and was in need to renovation the gates were destroyed walls were broken and the neighbors who lived nearby spread rumors of the bungalow being haunted rustam heeded these rumors and wanted to check the house for himself before making any decisions on confirming his purchase 
During his visit, in one of the room, he noticed a noose hanging from the fan in the middle of the room. After seeing all these signs, he consulted a Vastu Shastra professional and based on all the information he provided, he got some recommendations on furniture placement and the coloring of walls in order to make the house comfortable for him to live in. One of the most strange aspects he mentioned was to place rudras or significant gemstones on the wall to ward off the spirits. The aspects of placing these gems on the wall had cost Rustam around 50 lakhs. House of Four Doors Janisha and her family live in a one-bedroom apartment in Buribri. She used to enjoy cooking in her kitchen and was very passionate about it. The apartment that she used to live in had a long corridors or passageway, which are set of doors leading to different rooms. There were specifically three doors, where the first door led in the hallway, the second into the kitchen, and the third into the bedroom. According to Vastu, having three doors consecutive in considered are unlucky. He had consulted the family pundits who recommended that they add an additional door to break the unluckiness pattern, and as a result, they constructed a new door between the kitchen and bedroom. The addition of the new door caused the kitchen to become crowded as more people used to enter simultaneously and made it difficult for Janisha to cook in this small space. Eventually, she lost her interest in cooking because of the tightness of the space. Room of Marble Tile The Vora family lives in a small one-bedroom apartment. During the COVID-19 pandemic, most of their work had shifted in online media, but their family struggled to adjust because they weren't able to carve smaller private space for themselves within the tiny area of apartment. At that time, one of their neighbors were planning to sell their home, and they seized opportunity to purchase that adjacent apartment to combine it into one and form a bigger space for themselves. This would allow them to create more personalized areas. After purchasing the apartment, they discovered that one of the rooms is far too hot to live in, as it was in the west direction and a lot of the heat was coming in. So they, so they thought to call down the Vastu consultant to address this issue. So he explained to him the reason for the heat is because of the agni position of the house. And in order to counter this, the entire room had to be tiled with, uh, with marble to help cool it down. Once this was done, because the presence of tile in every corner or, por uh, or portion of the room appeared to be creating a distinct visual grid that made it different from the rest of the house. When I looked at the analysis, the 10 houses looked very absurd because the recommendations were non-functional as consultant recommended relocating the kitchen according to Vastu but it serves no purpose. The wall also did not have the functional benefit as it was of no use for the partition, but to divert the direction of movement. They were non-ergonomic as the consultant recommendation to add a door between the kitchen made it difficult to move around and cook. The temple located between the living room obstructed the movement in the house. They were economic as the consultant gave suggestions on who were able to afford it. The practice of putting 50 lakh gems was suggested because Rustam financially could afford it to spend on his project. As I asked each one of the consultant, they had no reference. So now I'm stuck with the situation that it's absurd without reference and don't know why people do it actually. But now when I look back at the most of the architectural practice, the larger portion of design form of space is attributed to specific tangible logics. The notion of Vastu helps dive into the realm of the absurd and intangible as a new logic for thinking of space. Thank you. So I was um, pretty much in time. Uh, I'll invite Viraj to give his presentation. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. Hello, this is uh, Viraj Adate. Uh, real estate agencies sell houses using amenities like swimming pools, gyms, clubhouses, etc., and not by showing how the actual house would be. These advertisements thus manufactured. Uh, 
<clears throat> imagined image which starts shaping the ideas of home to an extent that people primarily define a good home by having them in their homes thus associating to a live <clears throat> to living a successful life making the viewer idealize that way of living and aspire to have one thus the research question what is the role of imagined images in as spatial aspirations i looked at it through uh, advertisements in newspapers over several decades and marked transitions they were analyzed alongside the political context of the city country and the world that influenced housing and spatial aspirations pre 1960s this ad this ad from 1925 depicts the aspiration of owning a house in new garden suburbs it comes from the context of congestion where the aspiration emerged was that of the garden city one combining the benefits of the country in the city this ad from 1939 depicts the aspiration of the equal rights shelter and living in better conditions it comes from the context of caste discrimination where the aspiration for equal rights emerged while wanting to live collectively here 1948 depicts the aspiration of finding a home it comes from the context of migration after independence and shortage of housing where the aspiration was to find a place where they belong this ad from 1950s depicts the aspiration of having a living space other than the street and slums multi storied buildings like that of american skyline it comes from the context of the article housing shortage reported by gg mehta and unaffordability the aspiration emerged here was to have a decent form of shelter this as this image from 1954 depicts the aspiration of a modern lifestyle sofa lamp industrial uh, lamp telephone etc it comes from the context of patriarchal image of home the idea of leisure in a home emerged here this ad from 1954 depicts the aspiration of a home uh, of a house to be more than a room segregation of spaces into a living room and kitchen it comes from the context of nehruvian idea of india and the first five year plan where the aspiration was that of the development of the country and its people thus this pre 60s sees a shift in garden suburbs equal rights ideas in of leisure collective living and development of the country while finding a place to belong the 1960s this ad from 1961 depicts the aspiration of vacation being closer to nature and owning a holiday home it comes from the context of a monotonous routine in the city disconnected from nature where the aspiration emerged was to have a vacation connected with nature here the aspiration of a living room for a family of four and occasional guests it comes from the context of industrialized uh, it comes from the context of industrialized mass production where the aspiration was to have industrialized furniture with material and form being sleek and refined here the aspiration is of planning and developing cities to accommodate projected futures it comes from the context of nation building and an aspiration to becoming like foreign cities new york dubai here the asp- here the aspiration is to own a rent land and modern properties with amenities and a view the idea of ownership and rental emerged here thus the decade of 1960s sees an emergence in the ideas of vacation nature uh, ownership and wanting to be like one of the foreign cities the 1970s here the aspiration is of owning a place with the view of the sea and the promenade marine drive it comes from the context of framing city skylines where mumbai aspires to be miami new york here the aspiration is of a modern house with public library uh, uh, with a library bar a furniture made of stainless steel and aluminium it comes from the context of modern lifestyle and patriarchal images of home with an aspiration to redefine leisure at home here the aspiration is to have branded appliances that make the home it comes from the context of a uh, brand materialization and an aspiration of a stylized home here the aspiration is to have a job that provides housing it comes from the context of affordability aspiring to have a home close to workspace here the aspiration is to live in a sanitized and clean neighborhood patrick gedes in 1930s asserted a shortage of housing and that people in bombay were warehoused later his plans were referred thus the 1970s was a decade aspiring to frame a city skyline redefining leisure at home stylization and a house with amenities in an aesthetic neighborhood the 1980s here the aspiration is of efficient use of space and quicker efficient solutions it comes from the congestion with the aspiration to using new age materials for efficient daily use here the aspiration is of owning a plot services water electricity transport transportation and developed neighborhood it comes from the context of site and service scheme with the aspiration to live in plots planned to accommodate basic necessities here the aspiration is of experiencing modern amenities one can not experience at home and aspiring to have comfort and ease in another city this is when people start migrating for jobs expanding businesses in different cities while aspiring to find comfort and ease in another city thus the decade of 80s 
shifts to new age materials standardization standardizing basic necessities and experiencing new comfort and ease in other cities the 1990s here the aspiration of selling renting and owning a house easily it comes from the context of liberalization and investments while aspiring to have a sense of ownership thus looking at house not as a need but as an asset here the aspiration is of faster construction prefab house a house made of timber easily transportable it comes from the context of affordable uh, holiday homes or second homes with the aspiration to have an affordable low cost second home closer to nature thus the 90s saw a shift in the view of the house uh, from a need to an asset faster and low cost uh, construction techniques and ownership the 2000s here the aspiration is of owning a house that is perfect as per vastu and to have more fsi it comes from the context of vastu shastra with the aspiration to have vastu compliant prosperous home here the aspiration is of living in a township close to nature surrounded by hills and a lake to have a stylized facade building it comes from the context of european influence expansion of city and the, with the aspiration to have a stylized exotic home close to nature here the aspiration is of owning a house with luxurious amenities like swimming pools club houses etc it comes from the context of 20 minute cities with the aspiration to have all amenities in close proximity here the aspiration is of owning renting a farmhouse with luxury one sees a shift to organic lifestyle with the aspiration to combine the benefits of the country and the city the decades of 2000 saw a shift in the idea of amenities from water supply electricity transport services to having a swimming pool club a gym house a gym club houses etc the idea of 20 minute city emerged too 2010s here the aspiration is to have everything in control of automation it comes from the context of growth of technology and it sector with the aspiration to operate things within a click here the aspiration is of owning a sea view and framing the sea link it comes from the context of sea link with the aspiration to have an uninterrupted view here the aspiration is to have the premises uh, the na- nature in the premises while going higher it comes from the context of lack of open green spaces within reach and the aspiration to adding nature to the city the 2010s saw a shift towards technology wanting a smart city and things to change in a click the want to being closer to nature in the city uh, depends post 2020s uh, here the aspiration is of having personal space and spacious home it comes from the context of pandemic with the aspiration to redefine personal space in confined quarters here the aspiration is of uh, here the aspiration is of going higher then surroundings it comes from the context of developing skyline and the aspiration to be like dubai new york with the every increasing want to go higher the 2020s is challenged by the ongoing pandemic this pandemic and lockdown has asked us to redefine what personal space is and in our homes one thing to observe is that the ads in the earlier decades were more diverse and in nature catering to different needs contexts income groups etc whereas the ones from 2000s became similar and catered to catered the same group that could afford it i further took interviews uh, drawing connect connections between the imagined images and the spatial aspirations i took 10 interviews on the cusp of buying a new house in the city of mumbai the attempt to document the the household was to map the character and behavior of the household the interviews were taken using the analytical framework categorized uh, according to their family history existing house Uh, existing home the search for the new house and some general questions pertaining to what they aspire to have uh, interview a a homemaker and you have only one minute yeah yeah a homemaker and school teacher running a household of three moving from goregaon to villeparle for ease in travel to her workspace she doesn't want to be on higher floors her daughter is growing and wishes for a room for herself she would eventually like to retire and stay at her in her village home so thus there were these three uh, other interviews which i had added and the ads which they referred to the observation was what all things does come into the ad the aspiration the conceptual aspirations that emerged from these ads i therefore conclude that the imagined image that influences our spatial aspirations does not only depend on advertisements they are equally affected by the past experiences of the people and the future speculations desires budget and health constraints requirements economic and the social natures thank you thank you viraj for the rapid timeline of advertisements that you shared um 
Our third presentation uh, is by Raghav Gupta, and he will be talking about migrant homemaking in the city. Raghav? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, is the screen visible? She can see us. Yeah. Hi, my name is Raghav, and the dissertation title is Migrant Homemaking. Growing up and living in diverse environments had a varied effect on me, which has often made me wonder why certain environments alter human behavior. What are the reasons why our home in the hillside made my life so slower, made me relaxed, and the one in the metropolitan area made me more anxious and dynamic? What is this idea of home? The interaction between spatial affordances and human inhibition must be studied and analyzed. What does the concept of home mean to a migrant? What are the different perceptions of the term? And how does this get produced each time an individual migrates. To rec uh, the dissertation then went on to record and document the experience of home in migrant individuals through routine and practices that a migrant carries over the new built environment. Also to map the urban form of the individual households and neighborhoods to explain practices of inhibitions and homemaking. What are the ideas of, of home? Whether or if a home is a place, a space, a feeling, or a practice, or an active condition of the state of being in the world, as Shelley Mallow. The meaning of home should not be inter interpreted just not in terms of behavioral and human theories, but also in terms of viewpoints that recognize the architectural form and societal variables as key forces in the formation and reproduction of environmental meaning. These ideas home extend to a lot of five broader categories, the identity, the relations, the material structure, the temporal, security and control, with the spatial dimension being the other end, other end of the spectrum. The factors that make a migrant feel at home or not at home can vary and also change over time, as, as can their perception of where they call home. Their experiences with homemaking can reveal a lot about how successfully they're settling in and adapting to the culture they have migrated into, as well as how socially cohesive that society is. It all contributed to better understanding of people's perceptions of how social connections such as family ties, friends networks, or other migrants might help them feel at home. These links, however, do not discuss how and if the fabric of the environment influences these actors and relationships, which in turn form these views. The following dissertation aimed to fill in the gap into these files. Uh, Convigero, a Japanese architect, methodically traced buildings and varieties of furniture, uh, clothing and commodities, everyday objects and people's habits. Based on the same strategy, the conversations were documented by taking fast diagnostic sketches. Uh, and visual notes with footnotes of anything and everything that was noticed for the interviews. As a result, emergent themes uh, linked to the concept of home have, have been narrowed down. Interviews were taken place physically by visiting the individuals in areas where they felt at ease and were also uh, and free to express themselves, such as a private corner at their homes or while driving around their neighborhood in their vehicles. It was necessary to make clarifications on the meaning of several phrases, such as a migrant or an immigrant. Open-ended questions are also utilized to offer the offer the interviews as much as liberty to explore meanings and issues that are important to them. Tanuja's residential history is discovered to have a significant impact on her motives, ideas, and pictures of home. A semi-furnished flat gives them mobility to, to shape the spaces. Placing artifacts with certain sp special meaning or aesthetic features within, within or around the home arranging furniture and maintaining the home are all examples of territorial activities that are sometimes referred to as personalizing. These formal qualities primarily pertain to the housing type in which a home is contained, as well as the size and spatial arrangement of the dwelling unit, and the link to the larger context in terms of blocks and street shape. Home for Nikita translates to a place of social acceptance, where one's behaviors, opinions, and moods are accepted. This, this notion also includes a space to strengthen and secure the relationship with family and friends. Home becomes a focal point of recurring activities from conversations, from habits, practices, to controlling intrusion from neighbors in terms of surveillance and noises. These are not restricted to her housing perimeter, but also occur over her friends and at work, shaping a sense of perceived and enhanced control. Relationships and networks developed at workspaces between the customer, the staff, and Anish expands his movement. His, his week begins with a phone calls from clients inquiring about the availability of a specific product. To ensure a smooth workflow, he had security cameras installed in his office, allowing him to monitor the staff's activity even while eating breakfast at his dining table. Because his office is almost 15 minutes away from his home, 
he has more time to drive out the neighborhood doing household activities like picking up goods at the wholesale market or medicine from the pharmacy. When the workload is too high and none of his staff is available to uh, provide the product, he doesn't mind going by himself as, uh, if there is an urgent need from one of the regulatory clients. These boundaries extend to multiple causes, be it a business, vacation, or simple food takeaway. The marking of one's neighborhood area, house, family territory, and individual territories within the home all communicate information about his identity in the neighborhood. The importance of home environment in the remembering process, as well as the specific role of memories in later life influence practice. The home as the arena, uh, the arena for everyday living was discovered to contain much of the substance of our memories, to give physical clues that awaken memories and to place specific functional memory preservation. The establishment of a sense of familiarity and routine in terms of how things must be done and from, from waking up to going to bed gives it the feeling of being at home. This obsession can also be seen in mobility across the neighborhood of designated lanes, roads, and stops. Mapping the configuration of houses and actors in the neighborhood, taking the Google history of the Google uh, locations, from red being the most frequent or familiar part of the neighborhood, and blue being the least, established a pattern that was uh, that remained constant across all the individuals. I then conclude by saying that the idea of home is not confined to the dwelling perimeters, but extends to beyond these borders from the neighborhood, even the suburb, town, or city to homemaking practices, which includes furniture, the routine, the work, and the objects. It is the configuration within the fabric of the environment that remains constant and stays in. This idea tends to get produced every time a migrant shifts from one place to another. These configurations include conversations, relationships, and networks with the self and the other. If the self is not present, then the certain homemaking matters won't develop, and hence the idea of home will change accordingly. The findings are pertinent to morphological changes in domestic space, both inside and outside the physical boundaries of home, which could be investigated investigated in adaptable housing contexts. Thank you. Thank you, Daga. Uh, it was your conclusion was pretty dense. I I hope that. Uh, we spent a little more time loosening it, but maybe we can do it during the conversation. Uh, I will now invite uh, Nandita uh, to present her thesis, Making a Home on the Street. Nandita, over to you. Hi, good morning to everyone. I'm Nandita Zoshi and my topic is making a home on a street. Street People occupy spaces in very different ways. Whether it is a public or a private space, human tend to, humans tend to appropriate their immediate surroundings. While this is easy in a private space, in a public space, it's very difficult to even occupy that space. Then appropriating is a task in itself. Streets are the most used spaces by humans which serve the purpose of a transit or a transaction space. The quality of the streets help in accommodating so many different actors along with their different activities. Some people tend to spend so much, so much of their time in, in this space that they subconsciously try to make it their home. Here, home is nothing but a space that gives them a sense of security or comfort. These appropriations happen at the most personal level, but they belong to everyone. So how do these things work on a larger scale? How do people claim their space within a large space? Is it something related to the way street is designed where it allows for certain spatiality to occur? All these questions come back to a core question of what exactly is home for a person? For some, it might be a place where they reside, but for others, it can be their workplace because that is where they spend most of their time. For some, it might just be a street to pass from a point, from a certain point to another point, which allows them to navigate through the space in different ways. For some, it might act as an extension to their homes where the space feels like home. Home can then be explored as not a, as not a place, but a feeling that one has in a certain space. Maybe for someone, the place where he stays might not be his home, but his workplace might become home. This opens up the ideas of home as a feeling of different emotions like security, belonging, etc. Thus, what characteristics does a street have that allow it to be dynamic? Thus, this thesis, this thesis aims to investigate the possible spatial negotiations which the street lends itself to accommodate varied actors. 
to map out active so the objectives of this thesis becomes to map out activities of different identified actors along along streets to understand ways in which a street is used to explore the possibilities of multiple appropriations within a street of different individuals thus what kind of spatial configurations provide for making home on a street to understand this a uh, street as a social life com uh, concerns with the ideas of comfort security and safety thus it links to the idea of street as a space for transit transaction leisure if these three things happen then what is the kind of spatiality that allows for these three things to happen to open up the idea of street what is uh, what is the actual meaning of street which gives rise to this the is it a paved part of the road is it a road including sidewalks of buildings uh, is it's a great distance to then connect the idea of street to home to then home is kind of understood where what is home is it a place a space a feeling a practice an active state of being in the world or home is where a place where one lives which means have you no home to go to is it a house or a dwelling is it an environment or a habitat is it a person's birthplace or a dear place to you thus these ideas of comfort security and safety then connect to the idea of appropriation which connect to the idea of home to to then distinguish home into further ways we then kind of go into what is the difference between a house and a home a house can provide a sense of place and belonging in an increasing alienating world where space and time are controlled structured functionally economically aesthetically and domestic communitarian practices whereas home can be also a place of safety and it then leads us to the question of home which can be a distinction between public and private thus this opens up the idea of home as a multi dimensional concept and to link this concept of home to the street thus making it thus making the street as a part of their social life to uh, to further identify this two types of streets were studied where one of which was in an informal settlement and one of and one other one was the market street in this actors were identified and then their movements were traced to understand the appropriation of street comparing what the street is actually designed as and how its form changes when different when different actors occupy it and thus to layer the layer it with the built form and the appropriation that happens on the street by different people and then what partiality and what partiality gets formed is what i intend to study the first site is uh, a street within an informal settlement so streets is ideally designed as uh, a transit space where where it is then divided into street the intermediate space which is also footpath and the shops this intermediate space is where it allows for certain appropriations to happen now the streets is occupied in very different ways through throughout the day and throughout the history it has been uh, appropriated so what are these appropriations then so a part of the shop then uh, extends onto the footpath to become like so in this case the footpath becomes an extension to the shop the veranda which becomes the extension of a home where the lady sits on the veranda to in in the day time to sell some things and while her home is just behind the door the alleyways on the street become a uh, become meeting spots for certain people the temple acts as a safety measure for extending her home where even if she she is alone she feels safe because there's a temple just behind it boxes boxes as an extension to a shop where where boxes are placed where boxes are placed on the street which kind of uh, spill out from the shop the second uh, site was a uh, market street that was studied so in this case there is a skywalk that goes just above the that goes above and uh, 
the state is then uh, is then designed to uh, act as the shops the street and the intermediate space here the uh, here the space below the skywalk also becomes a part of that intermediate space where it is used for parking it is used as a space for people selling their uh, things and the footpath is then appropriated in different ways footpath being appropriated to a transactional space the columns which allow for uh, which allow for people to sit and rest becomes a, a part of their leisure space the space below the skywalk being appropriated for parking and setting up their stalls the shade of trees allows for uh, setting up stalls or using an umbrella as a mode of shade vehicles being parked along the footpath all of these things happen while the street uh, while the street is uh, designed to just be a transit space thus the findings then become the street has multiple layers that are more than what they are designed for which allows people to occupy them in their unusual ways the way they appropriate the space helps them feel comfortable and safe thus making it their home transit is where transactions happen where the uh, the column is kind of used as a leisure space for people to sit on the veranda becomes an extension of home uh, for this person uh, this part of the street becomes an extension for his home uh, for this person this part of the street becomes uh, his leisure space so what is the usefulness to then the architects is designing a street that includes these appropriations within itself allowing for multiple overlaps the street is not only a transit space but much more than that and thus these understandings can then be included in the design thinking process the idea of home is then <clears throat> the idea of home is then where these partialities that are uh, on the street allows for people to appropriate it in their own usual in their own unusual ways and thus they tend to feel more comfortable and more secure in these in this part of the public space and they tend to occupy them in their most different ways thus this makes them their home where home is not just a space but it is a feeling it is a emotional attachment that one has to that space thank you Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the arc of these. Can you all hear me? Because some people said, mentioned that. Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah, okay. we can. Uh, I I think the uh, uh, the arc of presentations in this uh, set of uh, uh, in this uh, panel was very interesting. Where you begin in a very stable home uh, or a kind of a shell in which you kind of uh, feel emotionally. unstable and so you induce uh, or you bring in these um, consultants to uh, you know uh, to make it comfortable for you and then you move into uh, the idea of images and how we inhabit images a, a, a home that is out there and then you literally kind of come out in uh, nandita's presentation and try to inhabit through appropriations and uh, uh, you know uh, assertions on in the outside space so i thought that the journey from the inside to the outside and finding home as a realm in that space was quite interesting arc uh, but uh, you know and and in that sense i was thinking that uh, this panel should have been called nowhere homes um and uh, there were two three things which i was thinking and i would really like uh, if you want to uh, expand or uh, reflect upon those things in our one is this idea of the uh, appropriation i mean can appropriation uh, or does appropriation suggest soft assertions and in that sense does one really belong or is belonging also an assertion uh, so does one belong anywhere uh, or can, can one claim to belong anywhere uh, and the second was this uh, like in in nandita's uh, presentation again it came uh that you know this idea of comfort feeling emotionally versus physically comfort and how do we kind of think of these categories because is the place where we spend more time 
equivalent to or can it be equated to that we feel comfortable with um and and so uh, or or which comfort is this um so so yeah there were there were some other questions but uh, i'll i'll uh, i'll invite uh, vishwanath and prasad to to you know expand this discussion and place more questions Uh, do you want me to go? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'll start with uh, the individual comments, and uh, you know, maybe we can draw out some larger ideas uh, after. Uh, Web, how? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the presentation was interesting, and I was uh, actually uh, looking for what are you drawing out of this. Uh, presentation, right? Uh, because you know, a lot of. Well, I, I mean, it was interesting to look at the WhatsApp chats, but also you know the fact that people are buying houses and then trying to figure out how it fits into the vastu uh, uh, shastra. Uh, and I mean, I was actually wondering how much do the consultants make? I mean, is it a profitable business uh, for everyone to hop onto? Uh, but you know, the thing is that. Uh, there's a lot going on in uh, Vastu Shastra, right? Uh, there's a system of energy that is there, right? There's ghosts and there's hauntings that are there, right? There's an the orientation of directions and the sun and the wind and all of those things are there, right? So it's a, it has a very different uh, way of orienting architecture itself, which is not about the ergonomics, which is not about the functionality, uh, not about the economic cost in some sense, right? It's really about a different energy in such a way, right? Now, what I would draw from it is looking at, is there a possibility for architecture to play a role uh, in this energy system, which, uh, you know, because we think of architecture in many specific ways, right? That, you know, with looking in terms of the aesthetics of it, what it does, you know, how do we use it? How are people like doing things? But this orientation towards like an architecture becoming a medium for luck, right? Uh, or a, a medium to sort of connect to a, a different energy system, right? Where does then, you know, an architecture that doesn't speak uh, in that world, but still works with the idea of energy, right? Because it's not as if energies are useless, or, you know, I mean, people have those anxieties, right? People have those nervousness, people are working with that questions of luck and fear and paranoia. Uh, and where does an architecture, which say the architecture that you would want to practice, right? Not to bring it back to saying that that is useless, but we need to think about, you know, functionality and ergonomics, those things. But how do we expand our ideas to think about energy systems, right? Uh, to, and how does an architecture respond to it, right? Because we are all have, I mean, the pandemic, if anything, has shown that we all have nervous energies, right? We are all within our homes having all kinds of issues, right? Mental health issues, but also anxieties of what is going to happen. This is, so people are, in, and this is the moment in time where it's, you know, working with that kind of a precarious world. And can uh, architecture in that sense, rather than saying that, you know, it needs to be about economy and function, you know, pro become a medium to thinking about how do we work with these energies right? uh, that people are actually dealing with. If not, then they're going to think about consultancy of Vastu Shastra. But, you know, how do you sort of fit yourself in that scenario, right? You know, so the conclusions need to be, uh, you know, more about you know, what is it that Vastu Shastra is doing in those moments? And, you know, what can a more, uh, uh, you know, what can the kind of architecture you would want to practice do in that situation, right? Which is not to say that we need to change people to say that that is useless, but is there, how do we work with that kind of energies, right? Uh, Viraj, uh, it was, uh, I mean, I was trying to actually get a sense of, you know, what are these images wanting uh, from us, uh, but also how are you reading these images, right? Uh, which is, uh, you sort of do that in one word of, you know, this image is about this, this image is about that, you know, but I felt like it needs a little more nuanced reading of what the image is trying to do. 
uh, of what the image is about. You know, if it's about the material, it's about uh, you know the aesthetic. There's something there that needs uh, in each of the image. It you know the reading of the image requires a little more thickness and nuance. Right? Uh, also, I mean, you know, each of uh, the images. Uh, is being produced by a certain group of people, right? So the house is different things based on who is putting out the advertisement. So it'd be interesting to also look at who is putting out the advertisement. And you sort of clearly see a shift from the state to more of a private where it's, you know, trying to be about more selling a house in a unique way, right? The height or the nature and the closeness. Uh, now, uh, I actually, I mean, I know Anuj sort of cut you and I felt like the presentation was going towards some climax of how you're drawing your observations and, you know, what is it that you're... So if you can actually quickly tell us what were your conclusions before I say something, uh, I should have said it then, but based on your study, just like in a minute, what, what is, where is it going? So I was very interested in knowing that. Uh, so the aspirations... I tracked down the, uh, I marked the transition over the period and then I looked at these case studies which I had done, right? There were these 10 interviews which I did with the people and over there, then I, did, uh, I marked out the observations, like where do these come from? As And as you mentioned, the nuance as in the material and all of those details, those were, uh, were looked into as in when, how the, it, as in the industrialization did come in and how the material did come yeah. and change from wood to steel and to rexine yeah. for the furniture. And okay. then, then the interviews were uh, in a way uh, like responding like what actually is happening in the current situation as well. So okay. before it was the ads were of housing, but now it's more of the image or the aspirations which are being created. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, I kind of felt that uh, a good way to actually go uh, about it would I be actually... Did, uh, I want to go to... Is there some... Anuj, I think you're uh, not muted. Uh, no, I was, you know, thinking that is there... Uh, you sort of uh, thinking about how the, the image of the house and how its perceptions have changed over a period of time. Uh, but I was also interested if, you know, as a method of actually, uh, is there, is there a, another way of reading the image that provides you clues to, you know, think about a different way of reading the house, right? Uh, in the sense of that at this point, you sort of reduce the image to one word or one way of looking at a house, right? Which is then it's there, but also to read, uh, and but that is the material that you're working with, right? And so to go with that material somewhere, how do you reread the material uh, for important clues to rethink housing, right? Because uh, what I was struggling with is where are you going with it, right? Uh, and, and maybe you have something more to say in which you can tell us later, uh, but I was thinking about, you know, how do you reread the image to say that you know, if housing has become a shelter, or you know, shelter actually becomes housing at some point, right? Uh, the concept of shelter has now become mass housing, right? Uh, so how do we bring back certain ideas of housing that are there in the images to rethink housing, right? Is there something from the past that's been drawn to? Uh, so rather than just saying that these are this is what has happened and then we need to think, but how do you use the past a little more? Uh, uh, critically, but also fruitfully to, you know, think about housing today, right? Are there certain clues that are there of how the idea of housing has changed to help us, uh, you know, draw out a different understanding of a housing based on what has happened, right? Uh, also, uh, you know, I mean, we think about the market as being market, but the market also in some sense has certain, you know, there's a different way of reading the hoarding to say that, you know, something else can be done with that hoarding or that image of house, right? I mean, the Vastu, Vastu Shastra people are doing it, right? You know, I mean, they, they sort of located themselves in that market economy. Uh, so how do we, you know, look at ourselves also in that uh, world of housing, right? Rather than the, uh, how do we respond to it in some way, right? So what kind of methods of 
that the reading images start uh, there. Uh, Raghav, I was, uh, okay, I'll do this quickly. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I mean, all the presentations are actually interesting. Raghav, I was more interested in, you know, you sort of list out what goes into making a home, sort of migrant, like furniture, routine, work, and objects. Uh, and I was more interested in, you know, if it's about how, what goes into making a home as a process, you know, what is it that is the process of actually making the home, right? Not just the objects that are worked upon, but what is the act of working on the objects, right? Uh, so what is being done with the furniture, right? What is that process? Like, you know, if you can actually define, like start evolving architectural acts that go into making a home, right? Like appropriation is one of it, but in your space, you know, what is being done to the objects or with the objects? That what is being done with work, right? With the routine, with the furniture, uh, and it allows us to think about how, particularly in the case of a migrant, beyond the idea of settling, right? Because uh, settling is always going on in some sense for a migrant, right? We sort of uh, it, the house becomes a temporary space through which you move to somewhere else, maybe. Right? Uh, it's, it's always a house in the making rather than something that is already set in or you're trying to find your roots into, right? Because if we're particularly working on, with migrants, right? Is it a process of set, a process of uh, what is there to be reworked towards, uh, you know, other purposes? Like, what is the process of migration when it comes to a house particularly? How do you be a migrant in a house? Uh, for Nandita, uh, you know, the, there were these definitions of the street and the home was street was in some sense an extension or, and uh, the home is sort of this sense of belonging, right? Uh, and uh, so if one was to think about the street as stretching the idea of belonging itself from a home to somewhere other than where it belongs, right? Uh, so in a street, uh, you know, the constantly the ideas of belonging are being stretched because the street is filled with so many Right. That is that intermediate zone between the home and the street where ideas of home and the street in uh, some sense get stretched out. Right? Uh, even like just being in a street, uh, you tend to like the idea of home is not sort of being there, but you know, you, I mean, I, uh, I would be interested in who you interviewed to get a sense of that home for people is what is the sense of belonging? Is it, you know, belonging that is not at home, but in a street, which is might be a very different sense of home and belonging than with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, in a street, because there's so much activities, there's so much going on, the sense of belonging is always stretched towards other things that are always going on, right? So in some sense, it's always a relationship to uh, what is there. Uh, and so, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, like I would be interested in <clears throat> thinking about a home on the street uh, in the sense of, uh, uh, you know, what is the stretching of the home, the uh, concept of the home that happens on the street, right? But also, you know, the, the process of, of uh, you know, uh, producing a sense of dwelling or a belonging on the street itself that goes on, right? Uh, so what are these acts in which, that appropriation I felt was uh, one of it, which is that intermediate zone, uh, but I was more interested in these extended concepts of home and street, which, you know, the individuals who are there, people who are selling things, uh, right. So what are these different terms of, uh, you know, that are being stretched out in that space, intermediate space or on the street, right? Is the concept of home then stretched out to becoming something else? Is the concept of street getting stretched out towards something? So I was more interested in, uh, I mean, not more interested, but I was interested in knowing what is going on there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, I think all four topics were uh, very, very fascinating and also I think very uh, uh, important topics to that we should be talking about. And I also felt that they were trying to cover a vast sort of 
uh, area in in one research so I, I really hope that all of you are uh, going to take this forward in different ways not only in the next semester but maybe in the future as well so if i uh, so weber when i was uh, listening to you and i think you made an interesting point both in your abstract and at the end where you say that it is absurd and uh, right um, and you know i was really thinking about it that if if we remove absurdity from architecture if we remove all signs of absurdity absurdity from architecture will we still be left with architecture and in that sense what role does architecture or building play especially when we are talking of houses or homes what is the purpose of architecture for the inhabitant and it is very interesting to see that uh, in all the cases that you were uh, describing people are still not settled they there is some something which is unsettling in their lives and they are looking towards the space to provide that sense of settlement and i would argue that in the absence of the original architect or uh, uh, in the absence of the ability to converse with maybe the original designer of the building they are looking elsewhere for this uh, uh, some means by which they feel that that the space will help them settle themselves and so just like prasad was saying so if if i if in for a moment say that one of the purposes of architecture i'm not trying to neither am i trying to negate ergonomics climate temperature and all those technical or, or rational aspects of architecture nor am i trying to glorify the way vastu is practiced by saying this but for a moment if i say that one of the purposes of architecture is also to uh, uh, curate the energy flows uh, in a building not only like wind and sound and all that uh, but also of feelings of people uh, then where is it that we talk about it when will we talk about it or how will we talk about it and i feel uh, uh, or my I, i would like to provoke you by saying that it is the 20th century uh, uh, development in architecture st starting from neufert his work the frankfurter kitchen etc etc that the notion of functionalism has really uh, been brought to the forefront okay functionalism anthropometrics climate was always one of the concerns of architecture but i think that the 20th century sort of brought that right in our face to the extent that the only way we are able to justify or to sort of yeah justify what we do is through these rational means that you know no but light no but ventilation no anthropometrics and so if you if you give some leeway uh, in what you draw from these conclusions i think it will be uh, fascinating yeah i also felt that uh, i'm sure it was due to unintended consequences but i did feel that in some of the houses the what happened or the modifications that were done due to vastu also positively uh, uh, helped space in a different way like for example the first house where that wall was put next to the entrance i think it potentially creates also a nice entry space where i can put chappals and shoes and instead of directly entering into a big room or that other house where you know the look the kitchen platform was shifted from the toilet side to the other side uh, the very fact that you are not facing the toilet door when you are cooking Uh, or the bathroom door i think one of the doors was in that space uh, so i think you should sharply uh, your analysis of what impact those vastu changes had on architecture could be sharper on one hand but i think to me that that's a smaller thing to me the more important question is what is the role of the absurd in architecture and 
let us not uh, start saying that everything in architecture has to have some rational roots. Yeah? Uh, Viraj, in your case, uh, I mean, uh, when you were sort of going through all the housing advertisement, it seems that you have you have gone through a lot of data. And like Prasad is saying, uh, maybe there are many more stories uh, or many more things that you can draw out from your research that didn't come across, at least in the presentation. Uh, so I hope you have a big uh, uh, Backboard somewhere where you have printed all these advertisements and sort of put them, you know, and taken strings and tried to draw connections. I would also uh, later when you're answering, I would also like to know uh, what was the process of uh, selecting the advertisements? How curated were they? So is it that for every era you found 50 advertisements, but you showed us only three? Uh, because the kind of narrative that you were drawing, especially when you came to the post 2000 era, when you started saying that uh, it has become more uh, aspirational and dealing only with one section of society for the rich people. And uh, they have only started talking of amenities. I could see that it could also be because of the bias of the kind of advertisements you picked up from each era. Yeah, so I would like, so that is, one component I would like to discuss about the uh, uh, method of doing research. I feel that uh, if your research is primarily a comparison of what the image of the house that the advertisement is uh, uh, portraying in relation to the interviews that you conducted, because that at the end, when you talked about the interviews and gave the conclusion, I felt that that is what you wanted to do, that the the advertisements are portraying some sort of aspirational image of what a good house is. And in your interviews, people are telling something else. And you want to see what is what are the gaps and slippages between the two. But there, uh, I think we also need to know in the interviews that you conducted, since all of them must have been in 2021, are there interviews where you are asking people to recollect what they felt when they purchased a house in 1970s and 1980s? Or is it primarily about everyone purchasing a house now? Because then I see a, 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 a dissonance in the advertisement which begin from the beginning of 20, 20th century and go all the way to 21st century. And if I want to compare them only based on interviews of 2021, uh, it, it's a big challenge. Yeah? So uh, that is something that I would uh, like to discuss. So that last conclusion si slide that you put up, where, where you concluded saying that the, that the image being portrayed by the advertisements is uh, uh, substantially or is different from the kind of aspirations or the kind of thoughts people have when they go to the house. I think it is important to draw such conclusions, but uh, I'm, I, I didn't see anything in your ads and the interviews which, which would make that conclusion valid. So again, maybe that is something that we can discuss. Uh, Raghav, in your case, uh, talking of the migrant and uh, I know uh, briefly, in the beginning, you did talk a little bit about we should be clear about who is a migrant or what is a migrant or what is the definition of a migrant. And I'm sure uh, uh, you have you must have explored it in detail, comparing, say, uh, or looking at a migrant versus an expat or an immigrant versus a migrant versus an expat, uh, or also questions of where they have migrated from. So again, in the drawings or the narrative that you presented to us in the case studies, I was really wanting to understand who are these people? Where did they come from? Where have they migrated from? And when have they migrated? Okay. Uh, because I think these two questions are very important when talking of a migrant, without which it is very difficult for us to quickly read into the case studies that you are presenting us. We could only see 
especially what is happening today but i imagine that if you were to interview or look at the way they use space the same people use space 10 years from now when they have spent 10 years in mumbai it would be very different or i would imagine if someone has come from a migrated from a village in chatisgarh versus someone has migrated from pune uh, what they feel in mumbai would be very different because the punekar would know marathi and would know enough of movies and culture and politics of maharashtra whereas the person from chatisgarh would be much less aware so how alien they feel uh, and how strongly do they want to tie back to their uh, what they might still be calling home would be important so which also means that it would be important to also map or document what they call their home so if they feel that they are still not uh, at home in this new space then where are they at home what does their original house look like yeah. and how much are they trying to recreate patterns from their original home in this home that was one line of questioning uh, another interesting line of questioning i thought or inquiry that one can pick up from here is the idea of the settler and the nomad itself that uh, uh, i some some of my colleagues who i mean not not architects but from other fields and this is especially true for people in uh, finance and uh, computer related computer software related businesses some of them they they are in their mid 40s late 40s now but they still keep moving from city to city every 2 to 3 years they change their jobs uh, so i think they uh, in modern society there is this new idea of the nomad i think who never wants to settle so how do i talk of a migrant in the case of a person who wants to be a settler versus the idea of the migrant when they when in their minds they are a nomad they don't want to call a single place a home i think that could be another li- line of inquiry uh, and when you were showing especially some of uh, i think the second case i was also wondering for myself about our idea of a home and how how much of is how much of it is dependent on our own childhood memories of the home and how much of that are we trying to recreate wherever we go because uh, i think that and and this connects to raghav yours and nandita yours uh, research as well the idea of making a home yeah so i think one line of thinking is that some people are unsettled or don't have a notion of home and they are they try to make a home somewhere yeah through a set of processes and at some point in time re- they reach a, a a time when they have a home that, i think that is one way of thinking of a home the other way of of thinking of a home is that every day you have to make your home that homing is a continuous process which has to be done in terms of daily acts and that is what makes a home a home and uh, so i'll just switch nandita to you so in your initial uh, part of the presentation where you were expanding on the idea of home and trying to say is home a feeling of emotions what is home and when does home become a home i think these are all extremely pertinent questions but when you were showing the drawings of your case studies i couldn't quite uh, uh, connect the sensitivity and the nuance of your questioning of the home from the kind of uh, uh, site studies that you were doing so so for example when you are showing the column with the column base where someone was sitting now can that be a home for say 10 minutes where maybe i'm i'm reading a newspaper and drinking a cup of chai 
would you want to connect it on the anthropometrics of the column base would you want to connect it to the the level of traffic on the road and therefore it it allows you to uh, feel at home or not or does it depend on how many people can see you or how many people can you see what what makes me feel at home on a column base while reading the newspaper i think it's a very fascinating question so i'm wondering whether you should just pick three instances of homing and really go into the depth of it and then start asking the question are contemporary streets or roads uh, do they have the capacity for homing and is it that we are not asking the question is it that there are some spaces public spaces or urban spaces which are conducive to the idea of homing and some are not so which could lead us to to look at public spaces or urban spaces in a slightly different way that i think is the value of uh, the kind of study that you're doing yeah so those were my uh, comments for all four students like to respond vaibhav viraj raghav nanda yeah i'll answer viraj okay. yeah. first again you yeah. can go ahead go ahead uh so responding to a, a, a few points which prasad mentioned and i felt that the points could also answer to what vishwanath also mentioned uh as in how to go ahead so there were these observations conceptual aspirations which i had uh, noted down and which were the view nature luxury apartments gated community surveillance which is the cctv which does come under certain uh, specific uh, class of the uh, uh, i would say houses and uh, uh, services locality locations accessibility class based divisions uh, social standard parking spaces materials used for interiors etc uh building heights floor heights uh, smart homes these were the conceptual aspirations which i came up with and through my observations but then the housing that is currently existing in the city does not only cater to the uh, home making aspirations of the people uh it uh, it only feeds the uh, capital of the wealthy and the developers with no regard for content uh or income groups etc but does the way i mean to go ahead uh, can be rethinking the strategies of housing and uh, think of shifts from house making to home making and the uh, other points which i wanted to also uh, mention is uh, the, the best example of what i found was the site and service scheme where people are that they are given the plinth but people are making their own own homes or uh, building their own homes according to uh so called the economic the, the economic background of there there are many parameters it's not just the add the one thing which is like creating this aspiration uh and also uh, you mentioned uh, vishnu you mentioned about uh, how do you segregate the ads so since this the research was done during the uh, lockdowns and there were limited access to the archives so it was done online and and again the interviews which you asked ki uh, which whom did i interview so the interviews were taken uh, looked at ki the people who have recently bought a new house uh, who are looking for a new house and have recently shifted to a new house like uh, in past 2 years so these the, the interviews were recent and not the ones which you asked were they from like 1970s or the older ones uh and after in interviews it's not only the uh, image i mean uh, but also the past and present experiences with constraints of daily expenses uh, experiences and affect their aspirations yeah th that's it yeah so uh answering to prasad's you know questions about how you know what are the sub uh, 
specific thing that a migrant usually looks at the objects for example the furniture for example what they do, what they usually do with the stuff that they carry on over on from their uh, previous environment to this new thing that what are the personalizing features that they create so this is the thing that I was constantly looking at how you know routines change accordingly for example a lady uh, uh, a lady used to go to a vegetable market early on in, in her previous village she, she is uh, but now when she moved to delhi for example then she realized ki sabji wala to niche aata then she doesn't that routine for her then change the practice had that change but she had this habit of you know going around walking around neighborhood then she started to look for different actors for example then she realized ki earlier in the previous village she used to get milk daily but now that is not the case for her she used to realize ki there is a uh, some uh, this day where she, where she can go and walk around the neighborhood and look for stuff so her practice then this her routine or her movement across the neighborhood then formed accordingly this was shaped according to the fabric when the neighborhood provided it earlier the neighborhood told her ki na, no, the the vendors won't come to you but you have to go to them but now since the uh, this house is the routine changes there is another example the furniture that they carry on uh, first she lived in a one of the case studies are like the she lived in a unfurnished apartment so she had furniture with herself when she moved to the uh, delhi she realized that it's, it's a semi furnished flat now there are wardrobes fitted already there so there are she had these godrej cupboards where she used to you know uh, keep clothes and everything now now that stuff has become like a storage for all the uh, jhadu pochan all for example and so this is how the shift happens and uh, uh, answering to uh, uh, vishwanath's example yeah this is the thing that i uh, now i'm realizing that there's a difference between nomad and shelter uh, and a nomad and settler ki most of the uh, there's a certain age might, might be i might be wrong about it ki there's a certain age where you reach ki ha uh, the from from joining college to initially starting a business for a amateur businessman then the stage is for a no mad for example uh, there's a anish uh, uh, one of my case studies relates ki he used to travel uh, to different places in the country to look for you know but uh, then he uh, one another, another example he uh, the case study suggested he when the individual migrates to a family then he the entire uh, this shift of uh, from a no mad to settler has to happen because he now has to think about his different cases that where will his children go can his migration help can his obstruct the environment obstruct his you know children to develop in, in some cases so these are some things that uh, i uh, now i'm realizing what the nomad and settler thing that vishnu was pointing about ki is migrant what will how will their activities change from 10 years from now and uh, this their movement across the neighborhood obviously increases as one recognizes the patterns or get familiar with the neighborhood but yes something it is an ongoing process maybe ki to define home is something that becomes very ki ha ab mera ghar ban chuka hai now this is what i call home is maybe something that i also uh, migrate from i'm i'm from delhi then coming to mumbai and i feel like ki i constantly change from different uh, flats and i realized ki nahi nahi abhi to this thing is not then i have to go back to my old uh, food stall that i used to visit when i uh, lived in a different place now i'm looking for more places nearby so that my routine and patterns are now changing evolving from myself so this is an ongoing process i realized ki uh, look, it is not a conclusion thing but it can change over time um so i just want to kind of quickly answer to both of your questions i think this is uh, a thing where so i talked to i'll give you examples of two people who i talked to which is what made me make sense of what they are home or their idea of home is so uh the one lady who uh, the the example of veranda as a home so the lady uh, she has a small kid just this uh, behind is her house and she has a small kid and she kind of works throughout the day on the veranda that is just an extension of her house so her idea of home then not only limits its uh, limit itself to the four boundaries of a house but it also expands onto the veranda for her talking to people 
talking to customers kind of expands her claim of being at home so if she uh, if one day she decides not to set up her things on the veranda and she just uh, takes care of her kid in those four walls then her idea of home then kind of becomes very limited and she doesn't feel uh, that this is what you know i should be doing or this is where i belong or something so then so that then the term of home then it expands beyond those idea of house which is of a four walls and and it expands on to the veranda for her another example was uh, the person who was sitting on the column bench where uh, he so he stays back uh, so he is uh, uh, he stays at his home alone but for him when he comes to the street he interacts with people around him he looks at people going by people walking by for him that becomes that the feeling where he feels more uh, attached more belonging because that is where people talk to him people come and talk to him if he just stay at his home where he lives he doesn't feel uh, that sense of belonging because then he is left alone so that a uh, feeling of being alone or feeling of being left out is kind of what uh, helps him uh, you know occupy that appropriate that particular space on the street and that interactions kind of expand on to the ideas of home where um, you, you you are also asking about these uh, then what are these appropriation is one thing but then what are these relationships that people build is it a part of making home and so yes all of this is connected it is interlinked and that is what i also wanted to kind of look while i was doing this research yeah yeah so to answer the both of the questions uh, so uh, when i was looking at the all the 10 cases so to elaborate more about the absurdity and the uh, house making so what i was thinking was when it come to the making of the housing in mumbai it comes to more of the logic of the real estate and the economics but when actually coming to lived experience and emotions and the inhabiting of the space it start the appear absurd dimensions so can you see that sentence again uh, so yeah so when uh, mostly what i felt after looking the uh, 10 case studies that the when the mostly uh, making of the houses in mumbai we mostly look at the logics of the real estate or the economy part but when actually it come to the lived experience or the emotions or the in uh, uh, inhabiting of the space uh, the uh, uh, a new realm of uh, it starts that the matlab the thing starts to be become more absurd and the uh, the partition wall that all the case studies which i was looking at the uh, the partition wall wall was coming at the entrance of uh, the all the case studies which was highlighting the absurd that the absurd was coming because of the uh, uh, because of the uh, emotions of the persons and and they wanted to inhabit it, this space or to make uh, living more comfortable for themselves so uh, at uh, at that time the uh, the dimension of the absurdity comes in yeah. so just to kind of contextualize prasad's uh, comment he was uh, basically i mean the question was that what is the role of absurdity in architecture which means that number one what do we consider as absurd okay what becomes absurd in what appears to us as absurd um, in the background of what uh, do things become absurd yeah so and the second is that does absurdity have no value in uh, in our everyday lives that was the question so would you like to uh, Just yeah so that. for me the absurdity which i mentioned the three uh, points in the conclusion was the non functional non ergonomic and economic so uh, because the uh, in 
in in the 10 case studies which i was looking at these spaces were becoming the non ergonomic because of the addition of the door in the kitchen which made the tighten of the space and uh, that uh, addition of the door and the tightening of the space is becoming absurd because of the non, non because of the non ergonomic point and the non function part comes in when the uh, the partition walls comes at the entrance which has the no use of the partition uh, the dividing of the space but to only to divert the direction of the uh, divert the direction of the movement in the house the partition wall was placed so looking at these three points i was looking at the absurdity of uh, to define absurdity yeah, yeah but the point we are trying to make is that we do many things which are absurd in our everyday life yeah. like which are, which do not have any function so yeah. so why do we hold these so uh, critically and therefore uh, therefore what lies in those acts um, is is uh, is the question where we try to inhabit the home okay so maybe this is a this is a kind of deeper larger question that you you may want to think more mm -hmm. more taking more time uh, and we, since we have only 10 minutes i would uh, like to take some comments uh, and uh, i see prasad is raising uh, his hand so if, prasad you are mute we can't hear you prasad can anyone hear No, we can't hear you, Prasad. No, because it's a provisional person. That's why. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Now we can. Yeah. So the uh, so two things actually. Uh, one is one is actually the 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 uh, uh, the migrant settler and the nomad. You no, know, like like the uh, like the. the i mean uh, the, the nomad uh, to live and to kind of you know uh, uh, a thing and to kind of to, to be a nomad nomad is a non property seeking non kind of you know the migrant is slightly different in the sense that it's kind of slightly you know and even even the even uh, vishwanath was like like the nomad conceptually doesn't have a house like the new migrants the people who are moving cities on account of uh, job actually they have a house somewhere so there, there is a location that they are rooted to so that that root that rootedness is there but nomad ka na nomad ka is like a nomad ka is a, is a very uh, uh, suspended uh, uh, you know uh, make space as it happens as the movement happens and this, this kind of so nomad is like 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 that uh, because i'm i'm saying that because it's a kind of a uh, uh, conceptual uh, difference that is uh, require a lot of uh, uh, that is required to kind of you know it's like it's a it's a they're not they're not uh, they seek they seek some seek settling some seek uh some have a place rootedness but nomad is neither no property no rootedness no settling no like like the uh, it's a it's a it's a different thing but i was kind of uh wondering because you all you all shifted the coordinates of housing which has been held very strongly by the modern state now i'm mentioning modern state in a very specific way huh? modern state is a is a is a form of government which believes in rationality which believes in equality which believes in functionality which believes in all the things that we are saying huh? now you all have shifted it to kind of you know make it one as magical uh, aspiration imagery aspiration the street becoming the home uh, movements kind of you know bringing out a sense of home etc i'm saying what will what do you think the state should start thinking about in terms of you know uh because the state is a very big player in uh, uh, in uh, uh, in in thinking about housing and shelter and these kind of things now mujhe bata aap log ke aapke pure 
thesis me how do you kind of what where is what will the government kind of you know do if you are kind of you know shifting it to such a level of non property non uh, 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 you know a uh, functionality non uh, uh, in, into an imagery uh, dimension into the world becoming the home in case of nandita and where where what do you expect the state to do or do you think the statist idea of home and house was completely irrelevant or was always kind of incomplete and you know like where you what you are basically saying is that the home happens not through the idea of a standard house but through all of these strange things that you are posing and there are you are posed for there are other people who must have posed another for in this kind of you know series of presentation i'm asking you if that is so then what should the government government should stop thinking ke aap log to sab raste mein ghar bana loge aap log sab magic se ghar ban jayega aapka aapka nomadic ek realm se image se aspirational se builder bana ke dega tumko so what should the state be doing in this case you know is it do you see a do you see a do you or like what what should be the state planner or a state architect or a state you know a uh, policy maker uh, because 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 it all depends on how do you kind of uh, set up land policy how do you set up subsidies whether you should provide construction subsidies whether you should provide all of these are big factors and kind of you know the housing thinking so aap log ke is mein state ka kahan par state ko kahan par aap kya any anything any speculation anybody thought of any speculation on what the state should be doing in terms of uh in terms of uh, this question because i'll tell you for the last 200 years all states across the world have been obsessed with the housing question but the modern state ka base hai functionality you know empiricism uh, uh anthropomics or jo bhi hai jo bhi all of those scientific principles equality liberty is this kind aap log bol rahe ho ye sab to hai nahi kuch aur hai nomad hai ye hai image hai is this state ka state ka kya role hai kuch hai role ke nahi karna chahiye state ko i guess there is sorry sorry ha huh? yeah i guess there is it something that you know and you talk about the state ka kya role hai i guess jo the thing they plan accordingly right matlab they give a, give us house ki ha ye tumhare property hai skip it and you stay here for example if we we buy, we buy that house so but it is not limited to that only one thing but every you know jo aas paas mein jitne bhi cheez hai it is shape according to that agar aap bolte ho ki uh, i'm giving you one house to stay and this is your i'm calling it your house maybe not your home but that is the thing that the state is providing it is shaping our you know uh, our ideas that like we are talking about ki if I, if i am giving a row house typology or a individual plots and with gardens and everything then the the people who are going to stay there will automatically adapt to it matlab aisa kuch nahi ki they will come there and change it but there is this thing ki which has been going on ki humans try to adapt to whatever they put in ki jitna bhi aayega they will accept and move on to make it sharper i will ask what should the school be teaching you in a sense that you know magic and uh, imagery aspiration uh, nomadic life what should we be kind of you know thinking when we say housing how should we be kind of reformulate it's an important question it's a, it's a struggle that we are dealing with at the moment and all your thesis is kind of you know pushing us to think in this way kyunki state ka model to bahut simple hai itne logo ko itna ghar chahiye har family ko itna area chahiye har area ke andar open space ye wo toilet wagaire hona chahiye wagaire 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 all of those things very straight forward idea बट आ, आप लोग बोल रहे हो ये तो इससे तो घर बनता ही नहीं है घर तो कुछ और है क्या सिखाना चाहिए क्या सिखाऊ मैं वैभव वॉट डू वॉट डू वी टीच मैजिक हाउ डू वी टीच प्रसाद द मीडियम क्वेश्चन वॉट हाउ शुड आर्किटेक्ट बी मेड अ मीडियम
क्लासीफाइज हाउसिंग ओनली बेस्ड ऑन इकोनॉमिक क्राइटेरिया दैट्स द ओनली वे इन विच वी क्लासीफाई uh and to me that that is the first problem that we recognize only affordable housing uh or 4 bhk 3 bhk 2 bhk as different models of housing so to me that would be the first step accepting that houses can be classified in various forms and then i imagine policies will just like the government now is changing policies for affordable housing everything from permissible fsi to in amdavad for example minimum margins are different for affordable housing so once they name it differently at least they they are open to the fact that you can look at them differently you can have different policies or regulations for different forms of housing so i assume that if some form of nomad housing or migrant housing or any other definition that we might want to uh is is first established we could at least start that discussion i know it is a it's like it would still be a uphill challenge uh, but i think it starts with language that is my uh, take on it and would you like to add thanul first i you know uh, in some ways uh, like the state works with a certain uh, model right uh, which is that its idea is not to explore housing but its idea is to provide right i mean it's not really trying to uh, uh, but if you actually look at the government schemes and how they get built you know you'll see all of those things right there's magic and you know vastu and there there's financial magic you know speculation in terms of money becoming 100 times more or less like in a government scheme when it's actually happening all of those things are there right but in a policy you know you won't find really those terms because it can't really you know uh its model is it to serve close of categories and then for them to work with, right and what you talking about is more of a uh, you know whether sorry uh, is my internet uh, ha so uh, you know what we talking actually about you know because when even prasad and vishwanath were talking about it you know the settler nomad and the migrant become three categories right but i feel like all of us in some sense are all three at different points in time that right? someone who's extending on the street uh, uh right is in some moment a uh, nomad right but if we think about uh people and uh, that is a model of state which is to assign a category to person so that it can provide a house right but what all four of them are actually talking about is a certain sense of uh you know all of them can actually be even combined into one person right so that a person is at some point wanting to find a house in the street uh, at some point uh, you know wanting to set in uh, i think there's you know the different periods in which we sort of move through it what i feel is more interesting is the uh, not the form that it takes Can you not hear me, Anuj? From your face, it looks like you can't hear. Uh, or mm-hmm. you can. Oh, okay. Ha. Uh, yeah, so you know what I feel. What I feel is, if you know more, because 
a state reaches a certain state when it's formed, right? And that is what it provides. But before this, a state becomes a state, there's a process through which a house is becoming a house, right? Uh, and that can go in multiple ways, right? You know, the, the, I think Virat spoke about the plot, the uh, uh, site and service schemes, because it's one of those options that can go in 100 directions, right? Which is why it's so interesting, right? The Charles Fourier scheme is because it allows for a certain proliferation of housing types to emerge in that uh, one model, right? So is there a possibility of a model that can multiply into 100 different types? It can be a house for a nomad, a settler, you know? So, uh, it, it, you know, because a migrant in some sense is uh, someone who's always moving and multiplying to become different things in different cities, right? Uh, a nomad also is not someone who's sort of settled as an identity or as a person, but a nomad as a person is also always moving, right? Uh, and so is there a housing model that can keep moving or can multiply and proliferate into 100 typologies, you know, that there's no state in one state in which it can. So, uh, I mean, I would be more thinking about what are the processes in which things proliferate and become, you know, different things at different times. Uh, and uh, is there a housing model that sort of speaks to that? Right, uh, which is not sort of containing and putting them in a box of property or identity, but sort of opening it out to becoming a changing model. Yeah. Thanks. You want to add? I have I have many things to say, but then is that is that time? There is no time, Prasad. There no is. time. Oh, but there is time. It's still no, no. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But but in the next panel we can continue this discussion actually because it's not very far from this zone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we should we should conclude this session. And I'll I don't know if I'll be silly if I kind of uh, say this, but I am wondering whether home should even be made into an academic question. Um, and whether there is anything like an academic home or is it only academic home that we discuss in these because um, and what has happened actually the fate of this uh, panel has become that it is it is trapped into this existential kind of frame so uh, so and and i i don't know in that what role does ac academia have to play uh, so and therefore, one would ask that, is home really a question of cartography? Is, uh, does it lie in the cartographic space? And if not, uh, where? Uh, and how do we, and therefore, it is a methodological question. So, uh, so yeah, I know it is very inarticulate uh, space to end this uh, panel in, but I'll, I'll pass on the burden to Shriyank to, uh, to elaborate in the next session so thank you and we'll meet uh, we'll meet uh, in the next session at 11:15 uh, so